Good morning, church family. Hope everybody's doing good this morning. And uh, we are thankful to be able to come uh, into your living rooms and um, be able to uh, still yet stay connected, even though we had to cancel church this morning because of the slick roads and sidewalks and parking lots and all these different things. But we are thankful, we said uh, in the beginning when we started uh, because of the virus, uh, when we started the Facebook and YouTube page, we uh, said then, said, well, hey, you know, now uh, we don't ever have to, I guess, technically miss a service. It's not the same as being in church. Uh, Brother Kenny sent me um, a message last night, a text message last night, and he said, uh, being on the couch is not the same as being at church, and that's the truth. And so uh, we are uh, thankful, though, that we are able to still yet stay connected when we're not able to get together uh, for whatever uh, the reason being. But um, so uh, we'll we'll take just a, a few minutes to uh, mention a few things for us to be praying about. I hope everybody had a good Christmas and a good time with your friends and family. Hope that uh, you have spent some time reflecting on just what a gift that Christ uh, is uh, in our lives. And um, I know that we had a, a good a good Christmas. And, um, you know, we spent it and thanking God, even though this year has been a rough year for a lot of people, uh, thanking God for his many, many blessings. There's a song that we sing and Brother Seth plays um, a lot of uh, God is still good. Amen. And I say God is still good, uh, even though everybody's referring to 2020 is probably the worst year ever. But uh, I tell you what, God's still been good to us. God saved souls and God's called men and uh, God's, I've felt the presence of the Lord. And uh, a lot of times, if we'll be honest, a lot of times it's in those rough seasons, the rough times uh, when we feel the presence of the Lord most. And so we are very thankful for that. But I, I do want to mention, let's uh, continue to remember, uh, as you get, we put the call system call out yesterday, Sister Heather uh, and her family and Sister Tiffany and uh, their dad, uh, uh, Brother Cleve, um, during the loss of her Nana. And so, uh, pray for that family. Uh, pray for the, continue, continue to pray for the family of, uh, Mr. Harvey Hodges. Uh, let's remember, uh, Miss Gail and, uh, Miss Reba and all the kids and grandkids. And we'll be in that service later on today. And so y'all pray for us, if you will. Um, uh, let's, uh, continue. Remember brother Gary talked to him earlier in the week and, uh, still just uh, uh, waiting to hear, uh, hopefully and prayerfully, uh, some good results from uh, his CT scan. But continue to remember him, lift him up in prayer. And then I also want to mention, let's remember the family of Randy Greer. I mentioned uh, him maybe the last couple of services. Uh, he's a, a song leader over at Smithport Baptist Church where Brother Phil Arnold uh, pastors. And, and uh, he'd been in the hospital sick uh, with covid and he passed away um, on Christmas Day. And so uh, remember that family. His wife's name's Deborah. And then uh, he's got a son named Jacob and also a daughter there. And so uh, so remember uh, that family, the family of Randy Greer. And I know that they'd sure appreciate it. And I know it's, it's hard uh, for a lot of people, but I am thankful that we can pray this morning. I'm sure that every one of us uh, has a lot of burdens and a lot of things on our heart this morning. So let's go to the Lord in prayer and ask God to just help us and be with us and um, um, through the reading of his word and that we may be able to just draw closer to him. So let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you, God, for the day and all that you've done for us. We thank you, Lord, for this time, Lord, that we have, Lord, to open up your word. And Lord, God, just to try to bring some thoughts out this morning, Lord, just try to be faithful and Lord, try to convey, Lord, what you've laid upon our heart, Lord, to, uh, Lord, be a, a pastor and a minister, Lord, to the people, Lord, that are listening. Lord, I pray, God, that you'd be with our church family. Lord, these on Facebook that may be listening in, God, I pray, Lord, that uh, we'd just be a help and encouragement to them. Lord, we are thankful, Lord, uh, of means, Lord, of being able to connect with people, even though we're not able to meet in person on this day. And God, I pray, Lord, that you would help us, Lord, in these last days, Lord, to be uh, more about your will. And Lord, uh, Lord, I pray, God, that you would help us, Lord, in all that we say and do, Lord, to bring honor and glory to you. Help us, Lord, to have the burden, Lord, that we need to have. 
Lord, we pray, God, for these objects of prayer. Lord, we pray, God, for uh, these that have lost loved ones. And Lord, these going through hard times, we pray, God, that you would be with them, comfort them. Pray, Lord, for these that are awaiting test results. And Lord, these that are going through treatments, God, I just pray, Lord, that you would be with them. And Lord, help and comfort them. Lord, give them that reasonable state of health that they need. God, I pray especially for those that are lost, Lord, those that are undone, those that have never been born again by the grace of God, those that are headed toward toward the devil's hell. God, I pray, Lord, this morning, God, that you deal with their heart, Lord, finger about it, convict it. Lord, I pray, God, that they call on you before it's too late. Lord, may they see Jesus Christ as their only way, Lord, their only Savior, because you are the way, the truth, and the life, and no man cometh unto the Father but by you. Lord, I pray, God, that we just do our best to try to uh, direct them toward Christ. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want you, if you will, to open up your Bibles to Romans chapter number 10. Romans chapter number 10 this morning. And just want to give you um, a quick thought of what the Lord has placed on our heart. And, um, you know, a lot of times uh, we get to the end of the year. This would have been our last uh, Sunday service. We'll have Wednesday night service, Lord willing, this Wednesday. But the been the last uh, Sunday service that we had had of the year. A lot of times you focus in maybe on the year past or coming into a new year. And a lot of times, and, and we make this statement a lot, a lot of times people make uh, New Year's resolutions, whether it be that of uh, a weight loss or that of, um, you know, trying to change something uh, in their life or, or setting their mind toward um, uh, doing something, whether it be for themselves or for somebody else. But, um, and so I got, I got to thinking about that and, and I usually probably deal with that a lot. Um, uh, even different messages and you could preach it a uh, hundred different ways. You could preach on starting over, making a new start. Uh, you could preach on, um, just, uh, you know, what, what has transpired through the years and, or through this year and God bringing us through a lot of, uh, hard times and bringing us out on, uh, on the other side of that and looking into a new year. And so we're just, we're, we're, I mean, you could focus on, on a, a lot of different things when it comes down to the end of the year. But I believe, uh, for me, especially this passage in Romans chapter number 10, um, really spoke to my heart this morning. Um, I'd been studying, I'll be honest, I've been studying on something uh, different throughout the week and uh, really felt like what I had uh, prepared um, uh, through the week and uh, what the Lord laid on my heart through the week is just like um, that needed to be a, an, an in-person service. And so began um, just reading and searching and trying to pray and ask God what he'd have us uh, to preach on this morning. And um, and he led me to Romans chapter number 10, and this is a very familiar scripture and very familiar chapter. It's a great chapter. Uh, Brother Jason Cornett, I texted him this morning, and, and he said that's one of my favorite chapters. I know it is, and uh, it may be to you also, but I want to read the first, uh, about the first uh, three verses here and just give you a quick thought. Um, um, and thinking about that uh, as, as far as, you know, if there's one thing that I would want to change, uh, one thing that I'd want to improve on, and uh, trust me, uh, if you're like me, there's a whole lot I can improve on. Um, but if there's, if there's one thing that I can improve on through the year, uh, this would be it. But in Romans chapter number 10, I want you to pay attention uh, to what the scripture says. This is Paul writing here. It says, brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. For they, being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. For Moses describeth the righteousness which is of the law, that the man which doeth these things shall live by them. But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise, Say not in thine heart, Who shall ascend unto heaven, that is, to bring Christ down from above, 
or who shall descend into the deep, that is, to bring, Christ, bring up Christ again from the dead. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart, that is, the word of faith which we preach, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, thou, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed, for there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek, for the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And we went a little bit further than verse number three, and that's a great chapter and didn't want to leave anything out, but mainly dealing with the first, uh, the first verse of this chapter, I think about Paul. And Paul says, brethren, and so he's talking to those that are saved. And I talk to, uh, just as I'm talking to our church family this morning, but uh, it says, brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. And here is the thought that I want to deal with this morning, and that is having a heart for people. And if there's one thing that I think that we could say about the Apostle Paul and his writing, and no doubt he goes back, if you look back in your Bibles in chapter number 9 in the, in the book of Romans there, Paul says, I say a truth in Christ and lie not, my conscience also bearing witness in the Holy Ghost, that I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. For I could wish that myself were accursed from Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen according to the flesh, who are Israelites, to whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law, and the service of God and the promises, whose are the fathers and whom as concerning the flesh Christ came, who is over all, God blessed forever. Amen. And so Paul tells us in chapter number nine that he has a great burden for his people, those people of Israel. But Paul had a, a heart for people. Now, we talked about and, and we know about Paul's past life as Saul of Tarsus, and we realized that he had a, he had a, a heart for uh, doing those things against Christians and persecuting Christians and killing Christians. Brother Sanford touched on that Wednesday night. And, and uh, you know, we, we think a lot about that same zeal that he had and doing everything wrong was the same uh, the same type of zeal, if not more, that he had in trying to do everything right once uh, Christ uh, come into his heart and life. But I, I was thinking about this and having a heart for people. Now, let me let me say this: um, Paul's talking here, and he says, "My heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved." There's two things mentioned here that uh, are two of the greatest things that we could do for people. First of all, is to have a heart for them, uh, a heart's desire for them. And secondly, is to pray for them. He says, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. And so that's two of the greatest things. You know, we say often that praying is not the least that you can do. It's the most that you can do, and it truly is. And I'm thankful to know that that we, for those people that we are burdened for, that we can, uh, maybe people that we don't have even daily contact with, but we can pray and ask God that uh, he would deal with their heart. And, and maybe if it's somebody... Um, uh, somebody at a great distance from us that maybe the Lord would send somebody by their way and, and, uh, and, and, uh, you know, share the gospel with them. And, and, uh, you know, it's, it's just, a 
Um, it, it's the greatest. I, I think a lot of times we, we don't understand uh, that part of our prayer life. Uh, a lot of times we pray for a lot of the physical things um, uh, as, far as, as far as sicknesses. And I'm not saying that we shouldn't pray for those things. Um, we pray for a lot of the physical things. If somebody's hurting or, or somebody has lost a loved one or, or, or somebody is um, in, in a bad shape physically, a lot of times we focus in on those. A lot of times even in our prayer request, um, a lot of times if you'll just take, uh, take note and, and, and take notice, uh, even in, in church service, we pray for a a lot of things and a lot of things are mentioned and spoken that are of the physical nature, but his heart's desire and prayer for Israel is that they might be saved. And what Paul is showing here is that he has a heart for people. Now, remember this, that those leaders that after Paul is converted, those same leaders that he once ran with are the same leaders that now want to kill him and persecute him. And, and we realize that many times that they did. And we see him in prison. We see him beaten and all these different things. But it did not change his heart's desire for those people. And I, I got to thinking about this and and thinking about uh, having a heart for people. It and, and, and this is what uh, a few things I just wrote down I'd like to say. It does not mean compromising your beliefs. Having, you know, uh, I think a lot of people are are fooled into thinking, well, in order to have a heart for people, you have to believe like they believe. And that's not true. Um, you know, having a heart for people is sim is telling them the truth. You know, in fact, uh, somebody that truly uh, loves somebody will tell them the truth. They won't tell them a lie. Uh, they won't try to uh, they won't try to cover things up or dodge things, but they'll simply tell them the truth. Some of the uh, some of my closest friends now are people early on uh, in my Christian life and and early on in my ministry that simply told me the truth. One of my one of my dearest friends, uh, um, he 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 simply uh, one day told me the truth. And uh, that really spoke to me. And, and I understand now on the other side of it, at first I could have took that as being, oh, he's being hateful or mean or, or, or um, not loving me or not being sympathetic in, uh, to me in my situation. But what that showed me is that he cared enough about me to really uh, tell me the truth and not only tell me the truth, but then show me the truth in the scripture. So it, it doesn't mean having a heart for people does not mean that you have to compromise your beliefs. Uh, um, it does not mean that you have to change your Bible. It doesn't mean that, you know, um, that you have to, um, uh, dodge things, uh, in, in the scripture or, 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 or certain things. It, it doesn't mean that you have to live without standards. I've, I've literally seen, um, uh, churches where they'll promote, Hey, we're doing a ministry, uh, in a bar, um, we're going to a bar and having, and having Bible study, you know, with those people, you know, we, you know, some people don't like the church scene and, you know, uh, uh, uh you know, it's not, uh, they're trying to make the church not churchy. Um, and, and some of them, even their, their phrases and their sayings and, and what they believe is along those lines. And, and what I see in that is, is they're trying to live without standards to try to to try to reach people and listen. Uh, you can have a heart for people and still live and abide by godly standards. Listen, you don't have to talk like they talk, and you don't have to go where they go, and uh, you don't have to live like they live. Uh, but you can still have a heart for them. I think about um, the passage in Jude, and in Jude it says, "And if some have compassion." making a difference, and of some, uh, save with fear, uh, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the, the garment spotted uh, by the flesh. And so I think that's two different ways that you uh, that we uh, have, to have to deal with people and show a heart for people. First of all, if some have compassion, making a difference. And if, if there's one thing that I need in my life is to have more compassion. Listen, we're, we are living 
in a world that wants to divide everybody. Uh, they want to divide people upon race, and they want to divide people uh, upon uh, uh, political affiliations and, and different things like that. They want they want everybody at each other's throat, and and a lot of times it's easy. Uh, you know, listen, it's it's easy if um, uh, let let's just use the um, the subject of politics. It, it's easy if. Uh, you know, if I see some somebody that may or talk to somebody and they don't have the same um, uh, the same um, uh, beliefs as I do as, as far as uh, policies, uh, political policies, and different things like that, it's easy. And and, and what uh, I guess what the devil wants to do, and what the world wants to do, what the media wants to do, is they want to drive a wedge so deep uh, between people is that they lose that having a heart for people. And so God help us that that not happen in our lives. Listen, it, it, um, uh, we're not, we're not uh, out there just trying to reach the Democrats and we're not out there just trying to uh, reach the Republicans. We're out there trying to reach all people. And, and I, I, I like how um, uh, Paul's uh, heart's desire and prayer for Israel, that, that, that blankets, uh, all people. It wasn't. It wasn't just a, a, a certain uh, a certain people of Israel, but for all Israel, is that they might be saved. And so I, I want us to understand that this morning. Listen, having a heart for people does not mean that you have to hide from the truth or uh, or um, or or dodge certain issues. But having a heart for people is simply having a heart of love of charity, of compassion. Listen, I'm just as much a human being as you are. I get aggravated, I get upset, and I get mad at, at, some, uh, at some things that you see, uh, whether it be locally or nationally. And it's, it's hard, it is really hard for me uh, not to get upset at those things. But at the same time, those, those things are happening and people do things, you know why? Because they're lost. They don't know the Lord. They don't have Christ in their life, and and that's that's the difference. You know what? You know what would um, make them not do the things that aggravate us and make us mad is if they had Christ in their life. And so, if we harden our hearts, if we harden our hearts and don't have a heart for a certain group of people because they may not live their life like we live our life. Then what that does is that that alienates them uh, uh, from uh, from us and us from them, and then not only that, that creates a a, a, a hatred, a malice, a bitterness in our heart towards somebody. And listen, if you're carrying bitterness and hardness in your heart towards somebody, I promise you this: you ain't going to tell them about Christ. And so. Uh, that's why it is uh, important for us to have a heart for people. I I think about uh, in the just the phrase of being a Christian, of being a Christian. Uh, Christian means uh, now a lot of people, um, you know, they'll hold up a sign and I'm a Christian, and, and they'll maybe put a put a thing on their Facebook page, hey, I'm a Christian, and all that stuff, but. Isn't it wonderful that, um, wouldn't it be great if you didn't have to shout it from the roof, rooftop what you were, but that people from the outside could look at your life, just as they did in the Bible, and say, hey, there's something about him. But, they, but the word Christian means to be Christ-like. And if there's one thing we could say about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is that he had a heart for people. It it didn't matter if they were of uh, great authority, whether they be a king, a prince, or um, a member of a, a court or a council or anything like that, or if it was a blind beggar, beggar by the street, or if it was if it was um, somebody that was a Gentile, somebody that wasn't of the same nationality um, as Christ, somebody that wasn't a Jew, uh, if it was a Gentile dog. Um, um, I, I think about Christ and I think about him having a heart for a multitude. Um, you know, as he, as he stands, uh, in an elevated place up on a mountaintop and he looks down upon the people and the Bible says he had compassion on them because they were his sheep. He saw them as sheep having no shepherd. 
whether it be a multitude of people like that or whether it be one individual, I think about blind Bartimaeus uh, sitting by the road and crying out, uh, thou son of David, have mercy on me, crying out for mercy and crying out for help. Whatever it was, the, the great Christian example of being Christ-like is that Christ had a heart for people, even on the cross of Calvary. There you have the, the repentant thief, a, a man that just moments beforehand had, had mocked him and scoffed him and, and uh, said the same things as that other thief did, the, the unrepentant thief had said. And, uh, you know, if, if you be Christ, you know, get us down uh, from here and all these different things. But still yet, Christ... Uh, not hardening his heart and uh, not holding a hatred or a bitterness toward him uh, as he was there on the cross. And that repentant thief cried out and said, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. I see in Christ somebody who had a heart for people, even those uh, as he's on the cross and as he, as he, as he yells, uh, screams out to the father, father, Forgive them, for they know not what they do. I see a, a man that had a heart for people. And, and um, you know, Paul's desire here is, is that they might be saved. And that should be our heart's desire uh, today, too. I, and and I'm, I'm telling you, this is for me more than it is anybody else. But I guess if there's something that I'd say I'd want to improve on the coming year, is that I'd have more of a heart for people. I appreciate the service that we had uh, Wednesday night, and the Lord really touched my heart and and through what was said and through testimony and different things like that. You say, well, that they might be saved from what? That they might be saved from hell. Uh, that we could get a real glimpse of our friends and family and those people even that we don't know and come in contact with, that we could get a real glimpse of those people Hey, you know what? They're one of two things. They're either saved or they're lost. Doesn't matter uh, what race they are. Doesn't matter what political affiliation that they are. Uh, doesn't mean, uh, uh, it doesn't matter what their past life was, who their parents are, or anything like that. But uh, that we would have a, a heart for them, heart for people that they might be saved. And, um, you know, if you're listening to this this morning, I want you to know this. Uh, my heart's desire for you is that you'd be saved. Um, I don't know who all the videos reach. It may be 10 people, maybe a thousand people. I, I don't know. But I want you to know this. Uh, I want you to be saved. And greater than me wanting you to be saved, the Lord wants you to be saved. He's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance these people that Paul was talking about here, his people of Israel, you know what they had? They had a belief in God. They had a belief in God. He said, for I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. And if there's a, a day and time that we're living in where we're in the same thing, hey, every mo everybody, knows even, uh, everybody knows something about God. Uh, a lot of people that you talk to, they say, oh yeah, I'm, I'm saved and different things, but there, there's a difference in, in being saved or knowing about God and being saved, knowing the Lord Jesus Christ and the free pardon of sin, being born again by the grace of God. For by grace are you saved through faith, not, not of yourselves. These people here, uh, you know, uh, my, my, my heart's desire and burden for you is not that you would um, just believe in God. My heart's desire and burden for you, just as Paul was here, is that, that you wouldn't just turn your life over to have good works. You know, a lot of times uh, people's ministry gets focused on that. Well, hey, let's just change people's lives. Let's, uh, uh, let's, let's instead of them doing bad, let's, let's help them do some good in their life and, and maybe get them uh, in a program where they do uh, good things and try to turn their life around, different things like that. But uh, Paul said, my heart's desire and prayer for Israel is that they might be saved. Now, let me ask you this question as I look at that verse, and I've said this before, and I'll say it again. Let's, let's just, uh, that, this is Paul's heart's desire. 
and prayer was for Israel. It would be easy for us to say, uh, my heart's desire and prayer for the world is that they might be saved, but maybe, I don't, maybe take some time with a piece of paper and just start writing down some names saying, God, give me a burden for this person and this person. Write set down some individuals' names, maybe maybe a, a community, um, maybe, maybe a group of people just as Paul did here. But I think about that and I, I think about uh, some people in our church that are, are lost and not saved. And I, I read that, I read that verse of scripture and I say, my heart's desire and prayer to God is for so-and-so to be saved, so-and-so to be saved. And I, I just want to end with that. I, I, I really believe that as far as one of the greatest things that we could do uh, as a church, collectively as a church, is um, have a greater desire, a greater uh, have a greater burden, have a greater prayer life. And let me say this, if you have a burden in your heart for lost people, it'll come out in your prayer life. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. And so if we have that burden of our heart and the prayer of our heart, that these people may be saved. And I'll say this in closing. If you're listening to this and never been saved, that chapter there, it goes on and says in the verse that we read in verse number nine, it says, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, shall believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, with the mouth confession is made to salvation. For the scripture saith, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Amen. As the song says, I've never been sorry. I've never heard one testimony of anybody say the worst thing I ever did in my life is get born again, get saved by the grace of God. That's the worst thing I ever did. I've not heard one person ever say that. In fact, it's just the opposite. Most of the time you see people testify out of a out of a out of a heart of praise to God and they say the best thing ever happened in my life is when God come by my way and saved my soul. And I want the same thing for you in verse number 13. It says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. God the Holy Ghost dealing with your heart and convicting your heart that you need to be saved. Just stop where you're at and call on him. If God's not dealing with your heart, don't don't mess with it. If he's not dealing with it, if he's not dealing with your heart and he's not convicting you of your sin, then it does no good to just say, well, the Bible says call on him and and uh, and I'll be saved and say, Jesus save me, Jesus save me. I tell you this, if God's tugging on your heartstrings and drawing uh, drawing him unto him, uh, drawing you unto himself, if you'll just call on his name, say, Lord, save me, uh, pray the best way you know how, that we'd repent of our sins and call on Christ to save us, he'll save you. And that's my heart's desire and prayer for you today is first of all, that you know that you're saved. And second of all, after you're saved, that that you would have a, a greater burden and a greater heart's desire to see others saved. I hope you have a good day. Look forward to seeing everybody Wednesday night. And I hope, I know it's been scattered this morning and, and maybe more talking than preaching, but that's, that's just what's on my heart. I hope that you have a good day. I hope that God will help us as a church, not just, uh, not just to say we want to see people get saved, but that we truly have a heart's desire and prayer uh, that people would come to know the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior. And so I hope you have a good day and look forward to seeing you soon. God bless.